Yo, what's going on, shroomies and shroomettes? It's your guy with the fun jive, Easy Blue Thumb, and we are back with another one. And in today's video, we got it made nice and easy. We picked us up a fruiting block from a local mushroom vendor, and this block is screaming fruiting conditions. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Let's get it. Let's go. All right, shroomies. I'm going to be completely honest when I say I haven't done much research on how to grow lion's mane specifically. But recently I met up with a local mushroom vendor and they had a few blocks that were ready for fruiting conditions. I also received a couple of micro pose supplies with their new medium sized mono tubs. So I said, you know what? This would be the perfect time to see if I can grow lion's mane with the mono tub. On this lion's mane grow series, our goal is to fruit our lion's mane, clone our lion's mane, inoculate our grains with our lion's mane, send that grain to bulk, and fruit our lion's mane once again. That is the goal, shroomies, and we must achieve that goal by any means. So let's get to it. By the end of this series, we should have made enough mistakes and enough adjustments to have learned how to grow lion's mane and other mushrooms that require different needs. So right now is our test run and whatever happens, it happens. All right, so to start off, we are going to hydrate our perlite. So what I did was I used one of my extra micropose mono tub bins and I filled it up with perlite and water. I'm going to mush it around, swish it up real good, make sure it's nice and hydrated. The perlite's very porous and it'll soak up that water and that's what we want. I'm just going to transfer it over by hand. No big deal. Not that big of a mess. Nice and easy cleanup. And we're good to go. While I transfer over this perlite, I want to show appreciation and give thanks to Micropose for sending over such a dope care package to your boy. We have medium size mono tubs. The filter patches, the liner, the flare saw mister, the autoclavable petri dishes, the polyfilm. They sent over the whole lineup. Thank you so much, Micropose. I appreciate the love and support. And Shroomies, I would not put my name behind something that I do not think is quality. So if you would like to support me and the channel, head to Micropose.com and use code EASYBLUETHUMB at checkout for 10% off. I appreciate the love and support. Thank you so much, Micropose, for the care package. And I went ahead and bought four more monotubs and a couple more supplies. The polyfilm is great, and the reusable Petri dishes are beautiful learning tools. So thank you. Now that I'm looking at this foil, while I'm doing the edits, that thing is huge. I should have cut it down just a little bit bigger than the block. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe it down our fruiting block with our 70% ISO, ISO, ISO. And once we do that, we are going to press all of the air out of the bag. Once all of the air is out of the bag, we then fold it and flip the bag over 
So where the bottom is now facing up. And now that everything is wiped down and your blade is cool, you can then cut your X. Uh, so you want to grab our lid now. We are on to the final steps and grab your Flarisol bottle, which is also kindly provided by Micropose. So we're just going to spray the inside of this lid, get it nice and saturated, and then we can go ahead and cover it up and let nature take its course. And after three days in fruiting conditions, we already can see some of that beautiful lion's mane peeking through in just three days. I'm excited for this. Hopefully it comes out nice. Get a nice block of lion's mane. Maybe slap it on a grill or grind it up. Put it in a smoothie. Let's go. Day seven, a full week, and we have a nice size piece of lion's mane poking through. Yeah. This is nice, too. You know, I didn't even have to really do much besides set up the area for it to just do its thing. So that's good for a change. I want to add that. I was misting the lid and I was also misting the sides of the bin and I did add about another cup or so of water into the perlite. All right. So now we're 11 days in fruiting conditions and we have a nice size but I'm not 100% sure if I'm applying the correct conditions you can see on the top of the fruit we have like the long stringy phalange finger type vibe going on and more towards the bottom you can see like it's more bunched up like that traditional looking lion's mane. So what I decided to do over the next few days was to lift the lid for a few hours while I had the air purifier going in the grow area and just let it breathe a bit. And I would do that over the course of the next few days. And day 15, we got it to look like this, which is a lot better, but we still have that open area in the middle with a lot of stringiness going on. So I decided to just keep doing that method since it looked a bit better. You see inside there, everything is getting bunched up. Maybe I'm having too much CO2 going on. Maybe that aluminum foil is hindering some humidity from going on. I'm not really sure, but as always, we will come back and we will correct things. Day 21. Let's go. We are going to harvest this bad boy. And as always, we sterilize the blade. And we don't want to just yank this thing off, you know. We don't want to rip out a bunch of substrate. Just give it a nice clean cut. And here we go. Our fresh lion's mane. Let's go, baby. So I got this weird thing growing on the bottom of it, too, that popped up. And it just expanded. So it doesn't look nasty. 
or anything like that. It just might be a little mutation, a lack of something. And here we have, let's go, baby. Kind of hyped to throw this thing in the smoothie. Now we got our lion's mane harvested. We are just going to reset our bin. Just go ahead and spray all the water you want inside there. And I'm going to add another two cups of water into the perlite. And over the days, I will let it breathe a bit, spray the lid, cover it back, let it breathe again, spray the lid, and cover it back. And I won't worry too much about spraying the filters. Um, previous grows, I've used MicroPose filters and never had an issue with them. And I, I spray, especially you want to create that humid environment. Uh, I wouldn't worry about it. Just don't saturate them. Don't let them sit there and float in water. And uh, I wouldn't spray alcohol on them either. All right. We are back. We did a nice little reset. Wiped down everything with our 70% ISO. We have our induction sterilizer, which is a beautiful tool to have definitely makes working that much better so what i'm gonna do is i'm having a brain fart right here you see my hands just moving back and forth <laughs> um i'm going to split this right down the middle and we are going to use our tweezers and we're going to grab a nice piece of this beautiful specimen, and we are going to apply that to our agar dishes. This was actually my first time using tweezers when cloning fruit. And at first it was a little difficult to get off the plate right here. But I notice if you just slide your finger down a little bit and open up the tweezer, press the material down on the agar and drag away it comes off nice and easy As we get ready to prep these plates for storage, we are going to give it a nice tight wrap with the polyfilm. I usually do about two and a half and then a nice pull on the end. And you also want to label them. I'm going to label these in order as which I pulled because it just makes things a lot easier to know that on the first one, I didn't do the best on getting the material off of the tweezer. The second one was a little bit better, and the third was the best transfer. So those are just notes that you, know, you personally would want to make in your head, just in case one of those plates don't look well at the end. You can say, oh, okay, that's probably why. Shroomies, if you're interested in these pre-poured agar dishes that are super clear, I will leave a link down in the description below and you can check it out. We are almost done dehydrating. We have two more hours left out of the 14 hour cycle at 140 degrees Fahrenheit. You can see the dehydrator that I have is an elite gourmet. It got a few racks on there. As you can see the slots on the side. So you can fit damn near any size fruit in here. Pumpkin, it doesn't matter. It's huge. Now this lion's mane, I don't know. It doesn't look the best 
as far as uh, appealing to the eye, but it's still a lion's mane and it's still going to have its medicinal properties. So I'm just going to blend this up, make a couple of smoothies, and maybe if I can get it in time, I'll make some capsules. So we broke it into a few small pieces, gave it a couple of taps with the Nutribullet, and here we have our fine powdered lion's mane. Let's go. Because I'm ready for my smoothie. But in the meantime, we will store this in our mason jar with a silica packet. Chill. This ain't no cooking show. I do my thing, you know what I'm saying? So I have some blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, an apple, banana, orange juice, some ice, and I measured out one gram of our lion's mane. So we going to blend it up. And here we have. Finally, ready to go. Our lion's mane smoothie. By Mr. Easy Blue. Let's go. A hey, flush number two, 14 days after harvest. You know, I had to hit you guys with an update. And we are looking beautiful. This is nice right here. So the adjustments that were made was I added a few more cups of water to the perlite. And I was constantly misting the lid and making sure that we had a nice humid environment. So much better on flush too. So we're going to do the same harvest and clone. And we are eating this one. Man, that lion's mane mycelium looks insane. Crazy, crazy. Look at that. All three of our clones have done well. We even got one starting to fruit up again. Look at that. That's crazy. So we're going to clean up these plates, make some more transfers, and we're going to set these into some grains. All right, I appreciate y'all for rocking with your boy. Y'all be easy. Peace. EasyBlueThumb.com is up and running. We have t-shirts, hoodies, slides. Go cop your granny a mug while you're at it. I appreciate the love and support. Go check it out. EasyBlueThumb.com. Let's go. <laughs>